Dobar dan, Sonja. Dobar dan. Kako ste? Kako ste? Dobro, dobro. Vidim kod vas sunce sije isto. Sunce sije, vrlo je toplo, da. Šest je, v šest sat je, ali je još vrlo toplo. Vidim Veru, koleginicu Veru. Dobar dan. Dobar dan. Direktor mi je Bašić rekao da vam se izvinim, zato što je on u Strasburu. Znam, znam, znam. Da vam šalje pozdrave i da je moj žao što neće biti sa nama, ali je to samo da vam prenesem. Pa bit će još prilike da smo zajedno. Tako je. Možda nije baš, kako se kaže, malo je maj mesec, puno ljudi u šest, niko već nije. Ne znam, zašto imate u šest... To je počelo zimi i onda je šest bilo, tada je već bio mrak, a sad i u pravu ste još je dan, možda je trebalo drugačije da se organizuje. Ali imat ćemo u vidu da promenimo to u pravu. Imam ovde Laru Sorgo, našu mlade, mladega istraživača, našu doktoricu. Vera, zdravo Lara. Evo, prihvatam. Ja ću sada polako prihvatim, samo da svi se priključe, pa... Ćemo onda na engleski preći, ali samo da se ti uključam. Evo, tu je i kolega Marko sa instituta. On se bavi ovom temom. Pozdravljena, Marija. A ja ću da pričam na engleski, ne? Da, 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 pričam. Sad ću preći na engleski, ali samo kad se... Zato što ja trebam, ja učim srpski sada, znate. Odlično ste naučili. Svaki dan bolje, ne? Pa kad smo bili u Zobnatici, odlično ste pričali. Mislim, svi smo pričali na svom jeziku i odlično smo se razumeli. Zaista, svi smo pričali na svom jeziku i razumeli smo se. I baš je bilo prijatno, zaista. Nadam se da će opet biti slično. Jedna od mojih, kako se kaže, najvrlo, vrlo lijepih trenutaka koje smo doživjeli. Jes, i ona proslava je bila baš lepa da se onda, o subotu kad smo proslavili, što je direktor organizao, baš je bilo prijetno. Vrlo, vrlo prijetno, vrlo lepo. To svi znaju kod nas, ne? Veš, Vera, bili smo u Zobatnica, to je kot naša Lipica. Ampak predvsem bilo je, kako se kaže, v zduši je bilo vrlo, vrlo dobro. Odlično, samo da vidim. Evo je Ljubica. Ljubica Đorđević nam se priključuje. Dobar dan, Ljubice. Dobar dan, Ljubice. Dobar dan, dobar dan svima. Pozdrav svima. Dobar dan. Ja, ovo je i naša koleginica Marija Jurić-Pahor, ona je saradnica instituta. Da, dobar dan. Dobar dan. Vera je isto tako naša bivša i sadašnja saradnica, možemo da kažemo. Ne, Vera? Znamo mi Veru sa nekih ranijih projekata, par je prijateljica bila instituta ranije. Drago mi je da vas vidim, Vera. Evo i meni je drago, sve vas puno pozdravljam. Naše dve, ili koliko je naših na slovenskom, u slovenščini, da sam vesela da vas vidim u sve, da vas lepo pozdravim, a i vas... Sve koleginice, baš mi je drago, evo da se vidimo i nadam se da ćemo ovo sad stvarno sa interesovanjem saslušati. Šta će nam Sonja reći? Većina već sve to zna, puno znate, ne? Ja sam samo, kada sam pitala ko dolazi, svi imaju neke obaveze, tako da šest na večer nije baš na optimalni čas za naše istraživače. Ne znam kako je kod vas, ali kod nas je 
Tako je. A kad je kod vas obično? O kasnije ili ranije? Ranije, ranije, ranije. Ranije. Ja. Oni su na institutu uh, rano ranioci, svi su sedam tamo, ja kad sam bila. Ja. Pa ne baš svi, evo mi, ne, ne neki ne. Ne, ne, mislim, ne, ne mislim na, na u, u Ljubljani, a, ja. a ne kod da. vas, nego na, u Ljubljani su oko sedam, osam. Ja sam dolazila oko devet, deset, oni već ne, malo te ne ručaju. Ja. Ne, znate što je, mislim da bi bilo neko, u četiri, na primjer, u četiri. To, Lara, kaj mislite vi? Še vi povejte? Ja, dober dan. Uh, dober dan. Jaz sem zgodni tip. <laughs> ne, ampak, ampak dobro, če je ti, ti parti, potem je ob šestih, ne, trahu. Samo ti parti. <laughs> no. Mi smo našli ovdje za takve evente, imamo u tri, u tri popodne, kao to smo našli kao vreme, da mogu i ovi koji su, to smo pre svega zbog ovih koji u Americi ili kod njih je devet ujutru. A i neki ovi, kod nas kažu da nije mnogo kasno, da nije mnogo rano i onda smo tako, dva, tri popodne. To je kod nas ne, to je isto tako, dva, tri, ja bi tri metri, ja. četiri, ne? Šta mislite sada, da čekamo još ili da ja počinjem? Vi, vi naročito mislim da hoćete da snimate, ne? To znači da... Da, 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 upali, da, da upaljeno je već. Možda ja mogu, ja ću da vas sad najavim, pa ću sad pređi na engleski. Možemo da počnemo, pa ću ja prihvatati ko se bude priključivao. Ovaj, onda na... važno je da ostaje snimeno, onda može da se... Da, da, bit će na sajtu, tako da svako onda može i da presluša što je korisno, tako da... Dobro, onda predložite da počnemo. Ja mislim da... Dobro, evo ja ću, ja ću da vas kratko najavim. Ok, um, it is a great pleasure uh, to welcome uh, Dr. Sonja Nova Kukanović, director of the Institute for, for Ethnic Studies in Ljubljana and full professor of applied linguistics at Faculty of Arts, Department for Comparative and General Linguistics, uh, University of Ljubljana. Uh, Professor Novak Lukanović will tell us something more about uh, multilingualism in Slovenia. And uh, pro- please, Professor Novak Lukanović, the floor is yours. You can start now. Thank you. Thank you very much. First, I'm, I, ha- I'm, I have a great pleasure uh, to give a talk uh, about a very huge and important topic, not just for Slovenia, but I think for the whole, uh, for the Europe and also for the world because um, I'm, I'm going to concentrate more on the um, linguistic diversity in our ethnic, uh, ethnically mixed areas. And of course, I'm going to speak also about some other, uh, some other topics connected with the language. But first of all, uh, I think that we have to, to say thank you to Academic Network because uh, this Academic Network is really a good chance to uh, collaborate and to uh, to uh, to networking not just you know uh, uh, within the lectures but also uh, within the uh, deeper research and to make some results complete results together and i think that this topic is one of the resu- one of the topic which we can you know um, uh, research and make some uh, good results together Uh, just first of all, I will start with some, uh, some let us say, general, uh, general thoughts, then uh, my general comments about um, multiculturalism. Uh, we know, and today, a number of migration flows are taking place in the world today. Growing mobility has increased contacts between different cultures, which enables their intermi- intermingling and mutual and enrichment, but also can lead to conflict. Increased culture and linguistic diversity brings about, about social and political changes. Uh, as, uh, as no society is immune to stereotypes, racism, intolerance, discrimination, and violence. In such contexts, dialect between culture is the most important means of bringing diversity closer together. Today's society is, of course, as I have mentioned, characterized by diversity. Most, most often linked to the relations between majority and minority communities or between dominant or non-dominant communities. 
cultural enhanced language is only one of the elements that define diversity in society. The research only seldom focuses on or attempts to provide some general definition or theoretical baseline of difference or diversity, what it means and what it encompasses. Diversity is never absolute and universal. It is the result of history, culture, power, ideology, but it always manifests itself in the interaction between groups. In some, uh, in some environments, the concept of diversity is limited to existence, while in other, it goes beyond the external framework and extends inwards, meaning that the environment considers and adopts measures that regulate diversity at all or at least some levels. Thus, the regulation and about all the role of different, different cultures or languages in an environment is closely linked to the phenomenon of multiculturalism, which, which does not in itself reveal the analytical content of, of ethnic heterogeneity, nor does indicate either the direction or the processes that interact. Here, I remember many texts that Professor Kleiner, who died many years ago, wrote about this difference, about existing and about the analytical context of direction and processes. It points to differentiation between groups, but it fails to define the relation that have been established between the dominant and non-dominant subordinate cultures or societies. Related to the phenomenon of multiculturalism, is the phenomenon of interculturalism characterized by not just the relation by relations between languages. This means relate not relations between languages because language is a system, but the relations between speakers of certain languages where conflicts and or harmonies between individual languages or groups are changing in parallel with wider social development. The challenge for language relation in the era of globalization, especially in recent decades, is also posed by the spread of English as the language of mediation with an expensive function. Multiculturalism in, or interculturalism is often seen as a problem to be regulated at the level of the state, but this is almost always considered in the context of inter-ethnic relations and ethnic conflicts. Let me summarize in a, such regard some thoughts that encompasses the notion of multiculturalism. Quite always we have asked what are the problems or causes of interacting relations and not what are the success of interethnic development and cooperation. We are very good in asking why we are different rather than what we do have in common, which is highlighting cultural differences um, which might lead to non-acceptance and xenophobia. We have asked over and over again about rights, for example, the right to education in one's mother tongue, and failed to focus on responsibilities. If we respect the other, it is our, resp it is our responsibility to learn his or her language, even though in the context of community, especially in the context of multinational and multicultural community, rights and responsibilities are necessary interviewed. Speaking of multiculturalism, multilingualism, in present Slovenia, one needs to start from the historical premises. The symbolism of intercultural dialogue is strongly linked to Slovenia, the Slovene territory and our historical experiences. Slovenia is a land of culture intermingling. And here I quote, but I was not sure whether I have translated one, uh, uh, one Slovenian writer and also a you know, cultural politician, Josip Widmar, who in 1932 wrote that Slovenia and territory of Slovenia, it's a, like a peninsula touched by the wind of Central European sentiment and washed by the sea, I don't know, by the sea, by the sea of the civilization, evolving at the crossroads of Romance, Pannonia, Germanic and Slavic cultures. So historical, it's not a good translation, but from Slovene. 
historical and political changes in the past resulting, resulted in increased sensi sensitivity towards the question of Slovene language and other languages in Slovenia. Historical background, migration process, EU accession, and the present sociolinguistic situation all influenced language policy and language planning in Slovenia. The territory on which the independent state of Slovenia was created in the early 90s, in the early 90s when we became independent, was never ethnically homogeneous. The number of ethnic minorities, their size and real economic and political power changed in accordance with changing political boundaries. The most recent change of state borders left Slovenia with a careful collection of members of non-Slovene ethnic groups. This can be classified as the classical territorial, territorial minorities, Italian, Hungarian, Roma, German speaking community, and the newly formed ethnic communities mostly comprising members of the nations of former Yugoslavia that emerged as a result of contemporary processes of economic immigration. The framework of Slovenia's language policy puts forward the culture and linguistic pluralism in Slovene society. And multilingualism and intercultural awareness are also among the objectives of the resolution on the national language policy program. I quote here the last resolution on the national language policy program, 2021-2025. Here, it's a, they stress multilingualism and intercultural awareness, which highlights in particular the languages of the Italian Hungarian minority, the Romani language, and the languages of various minorities, ethnic and immigrant communities. And special attention and sensitivity, sensi, sensi, sensitivity were always devoted to the concept of minority policy in Slovenia. The, let, the letter is based on the concept of human rights protection and here colleague Vera Klopčić knows about, is a really expert on this topic, and positive minority protection measures. That means positive discrimination. The structure variables here theoretically presented by Giles we have three pillars, demography, status, and institutional support, and later modified by Nelda and collaborators in 1996, and also taken in the, another model, COD model, capacity opportunity desired model, which was designed by Green, Green and Weinker. All this, or let us say, all these variables, which are you know, mentioned in these three theoretical work, important work, has been taken in account in policy making in Slovenia already in 1960. That's really very interesting because it looks that practice was before and then the theory, global theory came out. It was a political decision in that time, not based on the theoretical background. That's a system on the basis in 1960s of the last century of measures aimed at establishing an atmosphere and practice of cultural pluralism is in, uh, in these ethnically mixed areas of Prekmuria and Slovene Istria. Here, cultural pluralism is understood as a mutual participation of members of either majority or minority, which means that the state policy acknowledge, acknowledge the difference recognizes the minority community, sees diversity as a value, and does not suppress, suppress or get or get to the minority. And what is also important, important financially support all measures that are connected with the minority rights, with the bilingualism in this area. The nature of these special rights provided for the Italian Hungarian communities by the Slovene uh, communities by the Slovene constitution is dual. They are both collective and individual. The constitution rights of two national communities residing in ethnically mixed areas of Prekmuria and Slovene Istria are elaborated in more de detail in community statute statutes. The term ethnically mixed area is connected with the approach to minority perfection and was first introduced by Constitution 1963 and later elaborated, elaborated more in detail in the Constitution of 1974 and 1991. 
The term relates to the territory of individual municipalities where members of the autochthonous Italian and Hungarian communities reside. The, status, the statutes define the bilingual settlements in each municipality and provide that in those areas, Italian and Hungarian are equal to Slovene in public, Slovene language, in public and social life, which also means that all public and other signs in those areas must be bilingual. Language and language policy are always related in education and educational policy, which is something which is in every country. But in our environment in Slovenia, by in these areas, multicultural, multi-ethnic environments, bilingual education is practiced. This term usually refers to the use of two languages of instruction. Uh, we can speak about also about multilingual, but I stress this is a bilingual education. Why? Because it refers to the use of two languages of instruction whereby they are used to teach individual subjects and not just the language itself. There are many different types of bilingual education depending on the program, uh, goal, status, student group, uh, time slot and so on. And they are very much very good elaborated many years ago by Thomas Kutnam Kangas and McKee. We all know this, but bilingual education also sheds light on the complex of socio-political context of language contact and conflict in which bilingual programs are typically implemented. Bilingual education promotes also linguistic competence at both individual and also societal level. This is you know, written and also elaborated very much by Baker. So there are a lot of you know, theoretical, theoretical um, scientists in the world that they, they are doing on the bilingual education and also about the role of bilingual education. In past, the theory of bilingual education in Slovenia was upgraded with the teachers, researchers, and politicians' experience. Again, bilingual ed the education takes place in this area and implies education in one mother tongue, acquisition of second language, and learning the culture and history of one's own nation and the nation one lives with. Familiarity with, with the one and the other language, culture, nation indeed contributes to the elimination of negative stereotypes. The children of both nationalities developing an optimum command of the mother tongue and gaining adequate communicative competence in the second language, conditions are provided for the promotion of bilingualism, not only at individual level, but also on the wider social scale. Due to different circumstances, various sociodemographic conditions, as well as specific international arrangements, in Slovenia, even if it is a small country, we have two types, two models of bilingual education. First model is in which the educational process takes place in the mother tongue, while the other second language is compulsory subject. And this model is practiced in the Slovene Italian region, in Slovene Istria, and can be consider, considered as a socially firmly supported preservation model by Baker with an enrichment component offering language and culture also to students of the majority. In this area, owing to different historical circumstances, children attend preschool institution, primary and secondary schools with Slovene or Italian as the language of instruction and the second language as an obligatory subject of the curriculum. Students are thus educated in their mother tongue, Slovene or Italian, but they are obliged to learn second language, Slovene or Italian. This model of second language teaching in primary, uh, was in primary schools was established in 1959, very early, many years ago. And over the years, some new methods for teaching second language have been introduced. And here we have to mention Professor Lucia Chok, who was one of the authors that contributed very much uh, to the uh, to the methods of teaching second language. So uh, I have to mention two researchers who really uh, put efforts and made and contributed to the development of the model. The, uh, for the uh, model of the Italian, Slovenia Italian, was Lucia Choc. Of course, in schools with Italian as the language of instruction, teaching staff and other school personnel are natively Italian speakers, and Italian is also the language of oral and written communication in school, as well as with parents or the broader societies. 
And then is the second model in which both languages, the mother tongue and the second language, this model is completely different, are languages of instruction and school subjects. This model is practiced in Slovene Hungarian region and is considered a two way model of preservation of two languages. In the ethnically mixed area of Prekmurje, the educational process is built bilingual at all grades from kindergarten, primary schools to various types of secondary school. And for all students, irrespective of which is important, this type is for all students, irrespective of their ethnic affiliation or individual wishes. Bilingual education has been in place in Prekmurje also from 1959. It was a political decision and has been upgraded with the support of research and, very and various experimental studies. And here I have to mention Albina Nechakluk, who participated with his uh, experiments and research to the development of this model. Initially, but it was uh, the first, of course, after the Second World, initially, there were not only individual departments with Hungarian as a language of instruction, but since then, parents of Hungarian nationality, they uh, found that it was after the Second World that uh, Hungarian is a uh, is not, uh, is, it has a very low instrumental value, uh, contacts with Hungary, with clothes, was an iron curtain. So it looks that uh, nobody wants to enroll the child to the Hungarian school. So the, pol the political decision was to close these schools in Hungarian language and to, uh, uh, with the aim to maintain the minority and to maintain the Hungarian language. And so they found a kind, uh, they changed and they put, let us say, strategy. Today we can say a strategy of revitalization and they changed the model in, biling in a bilingual school. So now I think that also if Fishman would uh, hurt this, would be satisfied because you know Fishman was one who was writing a lot about revitalization and models and how to make a revitalization of minority languages. So in that period, it was just a political decision. Uh, and this, this model is because during each lesson, a concurrent method is applied, including language switching and bilingual education is carried by the contact of two groups and two languages. The context is not coincidental, but, perma but permanent, at least in a certain period of individual's life. The success of the, of the success, but this that certain period, period of individual's life is in a way also a negative if we want to have a language competence and a real bilingualism in the area, because when the child with 14 years stopped learning the second language, of course, you know, when he is 25, 26, doesn't have so good command in the second language or in the first. The success of bilingual communication during lesson in all, in all subject depends on various, of course, linguistic, pedagogic and psycholinguistic factors. And the child's ability to actively participate in bilingual education is closely connected to his or her language proficiency in the mother tongue and second language. Because of language switching during all classes, is it obvious that a child must acquire for active participation and understanding of new contents a certain degree of language competence in the second language. The switch between the one and the other language is conscious, planned, regular, and rational. The two mother tongues are both subjects and languages of instruction for all subjects. During all classes, a child can always answer or talk in his or her mother tongue, except during the lesson of second language and, of course, of mother tongue, first language. But in this model, uh, first language is, uh, is taught um, Hungarian as a subject, but Slovene language is for all children first language. And because Slovene is a state language, all children learn Slovene as a first language. In such way, school environment provides for equal uh, provides for an equal ratio ratio of both languages. Uh, of course, you know this. Uh, it's very difficult to provide such model because it needs a lot of uh, very good pedagogical staff, uh, pedagogy, and also a big motivation of the children and also of the teachers. 
uh, the two, both models are developed with the purpose to offer all the, an opportunity to develop, to develop communicative competence in their first language, as well as in the second language. And the opportunities for the use of both languages are supported by the system of institutional, institutional bilingualism. Now I have mentioned and I have explained how it is, let us say, legal provisions, historical background of the, they are in a way, this model can be called, called also multilingual because beside as European Union, beside learning first language, they are learning all two languages, major, minority language, second language, and also foreign language. So these children really are educated and have education in many languages. Successful bilingual, uh, and here maybe I can, you know, tell some results of our research, research because uh, I always say that there is a big difference between the jure and de facto. Everything is very nice written, uh, we have really uh, established uh, uh, very good uh, legislation and not just legislation, but also a political, strong political support and also financial support to, to really have a very good results. But of course, um, sometimes reality in everyday life is a little bit different. A lot of research has been done, you know, uh, but always research only for Italian minority or only Hungarian minority. And I'm going to, to mention here one research which was performed 10 years ago uh, and was the only, the only research, I think that Lara, Vera can support, only research that was make a comparison of two models. Even the research was performed 10 years ago, is still the data um, are very similar and it's it's very actual. And what was the, the what was the the aim of this research to to um, to make evaluation of which which model is better um, to have, to evaluate the success of bilingual primary education with regard to the socialization of pupils in two uh, two areas to compare knowledge of Slovene as a first language and the state language and as, as well as second language, and to compare Hungarian or, and Italian as a, second, as a first language and also a second language, plus foreign language. And at the same time, at the same time, uh, sorry, they are living here. And at the same time, what is also was we have got in the research, which is unique, control group. That means that we, uh, that we wanted to see uh, how in an uh, ordinary school in the center of in the center of Slovenia, uh, how is the um, how is the competence of Slovene as a first state language and also the competence of foreign language, so that you know to see to see whether uh, uh, whether this bilingual model both models. Uh, achieve the goals which are, you know, prescribed by the by the law, by the all this curriculum, and by also the language or ling linguistic policy. And so, just some 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 pa parts, you know. Uh, I will tell you only some results which I was, you know, involved. Even we have been a very huge team from the University of Primorska, the University of Ljubljana, Faculty of Arts, Institute for Ethnic Studies. But that, uh, that uh, we have done also uh, objective tests to find out the competence of language. And the tests show that pupils in two bilingual areas obtained very similar results in both Italian and Hungarian as a first language in terms of percentage of pupils who completely achieved the set goals. The main difference can be seen in the proportion of, a proportion of pupils who did not achieve the language goals. And you know we tested the, the now Italian Hungarian first as a first language, and uh, goals were achieved. We have decided we have then put goals achieved, goals partially achieved, and goals not achieved, and goals achieved a, a percentage quite the same, more than sixty percent for both Hungarians and Italians. But what was interesting, because surprised us, that goals was not were not achieved. 6% 6, 6 of Hungarians that, and 20% of Italians. 
This is a really a big discrepancy, discrepancies in, uh, in uh, evaluating uh, uh, Italian, it, Italian language. Um, uh, what was that? That's for us was very, how can you say, very much surprising because uh, we were thinking that Italian has a much more prestige, is an international language, and the children are much more motivated to learn Italian than, for example, Hungarian, because Hungarian is not, it's a difficult language, even they have a lot of, you know, uh, trans-border cooperation. But Italians, in, in Italian, they, at the same time, when we were going deeper, we found out that they support much more to learn English. That means that English enter in, the, uh, uh, in, in their value. Uh, but with the, when, it, when we were trying to see, you know, the, how is with Slovene as a first language and the state language, we found that uh, in Italian school and also in the um, bilingual school in Prekmurje, the level of uh, competence, the level of knowledge of Slovene language as a first language as a state was very high. And what was interesting that in comparison with the control group in Posto and Anjalets, the bilingual has shown much more successful and much better results than the school in the center, in the center of Slovenia. That means that uh, we can conclude that they really have a very, um, a very, um, very good instruct, very, very good education. That these schools are good. Uh, that uh, the results of um, uh, that means that learning English is very more important than Italian. That was the decision of Italians uh, uh, the, of the model in the Italian school. The results of other researchers have highlighted also further problems in addition to limited motivation with regard to the teaching of Italian as a second language. Unsuitable textbooks, large classes, large pupils per class, uh, uh, unsuitable classroom, uh, particularly at, at secondary level, teaching methodology that they don't like teachers, how do they learn, how do they teach Italian as a second language and so on. So, uh, uh, that at the end we can conclude that the members minority is very increase very critical regarding the way that schooling is organized but when we were now i can talk one hour about this but what i would like just again to stress that when we ask them if they want to uh, that the model can is changed and the model would be just for one for one for uh, for just for Ita italian italians or just for hungarians they would not agree. They wanted that, for example, in the Italian school, they can enroll also the children for the other, or other, uh, other. Um, how can you say um, uh, other nationalities? Uh, the same was is also in the uh, in the uh, in the Prekmurje. They agree completely with the uh, with the um, with the um, model of bilingual bilingual uh, model of bilingual education. Of course, this research was 10 years ago. We have now done in last years again, uh, again uh, researches, but separately in the Slovenia Nispra. And here was one of the leader who was performing this research, Lara Sorga, which is also with us. Uh, she, she, you know, was evaluated the system. She was making, she was also making research on the language competence of the Italian language, of the Slovene language, uh, in Italian schools and also in Slovene schools. So that we are now up to date also the uh, these uh, results because we want, um, we want to follow. Uh, to follow, to, to have like a longitudinal studies to see to see whether uh, whether the results change and what is the reason for changing, you know, this uh, attitude and competence of the first language and second language. And the same, we are now making also research in Hungary, but this in a in bilingual area in education, but this time not uh, to see the effectiveness or the evaluation of bilingual model. Uh, but to see, uh, because there are a lot of children from Hungary uh, coming in the elementary schools in Prekmurje, that means from the Hungary state to the bilingual school in Prekmurje, and we are trying to make to find out who are these children, why are motivated to come, and so and so on. So uh, now I just uh, it's uh, want to stress that. 
even the, the concept is uh, very well designed and the, the, the legal provisions are, in the reality, the results doesn't show the so, uh, so good results that you know, we, can, we can speak about real bilingual person. Because successful bilingual ed education provides the basis for the implementation of bilingualism, both at the individual and institutional level. Bilingualism in the area, implement, bilingualism implementation policy covers several aspects and touches on several different areas, reflecting in the organization of education, public institution, media, topography. Following Column's definition, it can be confirmed that the ethnically mixed area of Slovenia presents two types of collective rights, the right to preserve the language and the right to live the language, which is important. And this was also many times, not just column, columns definition, but also Mark Renut uh, uh, make a ref, uh, referee to uh, this definition that is very important to, to have right to preserve the language and right to live the language. And the right to preserve the language refers to the state's obligation to support institution and education in the language of minority, while the right to live the language allowed to use, understand the language in various everyday situations, both in private and public sphere. That means we come again to the Fishman theory of domain to, to be that language has to be in all five domains of Fishman if we want that is that has a vitality and that we can speak about uh, about real bilingualism uh, institutional bilingualism in two mixed area relies we use uh, professor albina nature and also professor clemente chooses on functional bilingualism that means members of majority and of minor of minority and Slovenia, of course, applies territorial principle, which, which is in a way criticized is good or is not good, but it's another topic to discuss, which means that the Slovene and Italian are both official language in mixed area and thus hold an equal status, status. In such regard, I have to come to another important, when I'm starting to pick, when I'm speaking about bilingualism, I said that bilingual education give the basis for, uh, for really successful bilingualism, if we want to have it. And now we count it to how is this bilingualism implemented, the implementation of bilingualism in the area. Uh, that means that the language must be used in the all domain and the language must be used, uh, must be used also, uh, also not just at the individual level uh, in the domain of the home, but also at the institutional level. So we have again very good legislation, uh, all legislation statute. I can talk here and mention in one hour all the all the uh, provisions decree that goes to how to realize the uh, uh, the uh, bilingualism in this area. For example, already the article uh, said, uh, of the constitution provides everyone has the right to use his language and script in a manner uh, in a manner provided by the law in the exercise of his rights and duties and in procedures before state and other authorities performing a public function. This means that public employee working in public administration into ethnical mixed areas have the right to use their own language in the workplace. They have to write. Citizens also have the right to use their language and in the exercise of their rights in procedures before state and other bodies performing a public function. The implementation of this constitutional provision does requires institutional bilingualism, ability of public authorities to use both languages in communication with each other and in communication with the users. That means that it is external and internal communication. The constitutional provisions are formalized by several laws. A requirement, a requirement for the employment in the public sec sector in the two these ethnically mixed areas is the knowledge of both the majority and minority languages, which enables the actual implementation of institutional bilingualism. The analysis of relevant legislation undoubtedly confirms that the purpose of language policy in Slovenia is to influence stakeholders 
thus and, and thus enable the achievement and implementation of the goals set for ensuring institutional bilingualness is in the ethnically mixed area. And then what is now we go on the biling bilingualism bonus is it's worth mentioning with the institutional bilingualism, which was again and can be highlighted as one of the Slovenian policy instruments for the implementation of bilingualism in public institution in these ethnically mixed areas. And what I want to stress again, that this bilingual bonus program was introduced in Slovenia, not in 1991, as a lot of people were thinking now when we change the system, but it was introduced in the late 50s. And can you imagine how revolutionary I think it was that in late 50s, they decided policy that they are going to give financial support, financial stimulation for, for, uh, for workers to use Italian and Slovene language. What was the reason? That's another question, but they give it was not a command they give just the uh, financial stimulation and this of course is a very interesting because the theory we, here we come to the to the cons to the theory of economical value of the language how the economic uh, with the economical instruments you promote bilingualism or multilingualism but uh, um, in that time you know they were i think they were not thinking about this this econ uh, language and economy was developed theoretically very late, later on. You know, now we have, of course, Francois Gran, Michele Gazzola, uh, Weinker. They are all, you know, dealing with this with this financial support for uh, instrument for uh, promoting. But in that, uh, it was it started. Uh, this was for me also very surprised and when I started to make research I here to have I have to say a thank you to my colleague Lara Sorgo who was going the ar ar archives of uh, Koper Co Co Capodistria all uh, all to find documents and to find documents that they really got the financial still now we don't know who was the one that decided to to give uh, to give order that they people get money we don't know policy of course of course you know we have here uh, we can also um, mention some results because we we uh, um, with this bilingualism bonus uh, bonus and bilingualism institutional bilingualism we have one uh, research institutional bilingualism uh, bilingualism bonus program which we try to find the effectiveness or ineffectiveness of this bilingual bonus for a realization of bilingualism in the area. Because effective by language policy based on bilingualism bonus and, and, and education both encourages the development of an individual's ability to master two languages. The bilingual, bilingual, bilingualism bonus, which is from three to 6% of the, uh, of the salary person get, uh, is more just a performance bonus. It systematic, systematically affects the vitality of the language of the national community. The research data show that the majority sees the bonus as an appropriate mechanism, while still relatively large proportions proportion believe that the bilingual bonus does not encourage, encourage the use of a minority language in workplace or have no opinion. Some of them think that if you live in a bilingual area, you, you are obliged to speak and to talk and to know language. It's quite a high percent of people think so. And I can quote some of the responses. The bonus is a reward for knowledge. It is a motivation to use the language, a motivation for additional language learning. The bonus also adds value to an employee and provides the advantage of having additional knowledge competence. And also some one wrote, it doesn't matter if one gets the bonus or not, if one gets money or not, one needs to accommodate to the client and that's how one shows them, them respect. However, for the program to be effective, it is also necessary to, to, to provide language training opportunities. And the respondents from our research who receive a bilingual bonus claim that the employee does not provide training to refresh to improve their knowledge of Italian or Hungarian or even Slovene language. And what is interesting now comparison with the education that the empirical research of this bilingual bonus reveal 
the higher level of knowledge of Italian compared to Hungarian, which could be attributed to the fact that Prit Muria compared to Slovenia Istria does not have a sufficient number of properly educated bilingual individuals who work in this, um, let us say, public institutions. So they don't have enough staffing staff. There is also a high level of language profit proficiency among those entitled to the bilingualism bonus, which is indeed expected, as the implementation of bilingualism, at least in the public administration, is additionally stipulated by this bonus. And the latter thus can be considered an effective state mechanism to promote the use of minority language. The data also show that, an average, that on average, those entitled to the bilingual bonus use Italian or Hungarian in the interaction with their clients, clients, they use more often the language. We found also that the difference in the frequency of language use between those who receive the bonus and those who don't were higher in Prekmuria. Based on the results, the bilingual bonus certainly motivates individuals to use a language. Oral and written communication with other staff members show statistically significant differences, which means that those who receive the bonus on, our, on average use Italian or Hungarian more often in their work. This is um, also a significant correlation is also between bilingualism bonus and the frequency use of Italian or Hungarian with other staff members. And finally, my final remark that protection and preservation of regional and minority languages is a key feature of Europe's cultural heritage. Through the Constitution, a number of legal acts, Slovenia provides the possibility of creating the conditions for the use of minority languages in various domains. And the legal regime in the country establishes institutional bilingualism, which, however, does not rely on functional bilingualism as despite the, the possibilities, the use of the minority language at the formal level is still an inadequate. The results of the research suggest that there is no interaction between the language of the national community. I use national community because in the uh, constitution we have a uh, Slovenian Italian national community, even we, we speak about Italian, Italian minority and Hungarian minority. Uh, that there is no interaction uh, between the language of minority and the environment. There may be a political and legal conditions for the implementation of bilingualism in, in place in the ethnically mixed areas, but social conditions are not. Having the possibility and competence to use the mother tongue in all domains, as Fishman said, and having also according to, uh, to uh, Green and Van Kerr model, capacity and opportunity, you have to have also desired. And having the possibility and competence to use is important for the identity of the community, but not enough for the existence of bilingual bicultural society environment. Bilingual bicultural society and environment also require an active majority since a minority does not live in and interact only with itself. Whether the majority acquires through education a sufficient level of knowledge of language of the national community to be able to implement the concept of bilingualism is still open question, which our research and the area and the data, empirical data which we have, we cannot very strong confirm, neither deny this, you know. More we say that they don't that majority does not through education acquire enough. In exploring the success of existing multilingual policy, we also consider Giles the taxonomy of ethnolinguistic vitality and found that the most of the variables points towards high vitality of Italians and Hungarians. The main obstacles, however, especially in Slovene Istria, are the demographic indicators, such as the size of community, members of number of members, age, and dispersion, which all put vitality at risk, vitality at risk. Even the special rights gar 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 guaranteeing equality hardly comp compensate for the size of community. Our research sh uh, showed that members of uh, 
of minorities highlight in particular bilingual bicultural environment and they are aware that without interaction and two-way communication with the majority the linguistic vitality of the national community community will be at risk and then of course one needs to be aware that societies are changing and that even ethnically mixed areas are not enclosed islands, I use a lot these islands and peninsulas, touched by, by the waves of migration and population mobility that change the population structure, patterns of living and language patterns. Under such condition, the traditional linguistically, culturally mixed environment is losing its identity. And it is not only the minority that in a way loses, losing its identity, but also the majority population due to this fact. At the beginning of, this was ethnically mixed, but at the uh, ethnically mixed area and the linguistic diversity of this area. But at the beginning of this, of my lecture, I mentioned also Slovenia's language policy, which is the in the latest resolution defines also Slovenia as both the language of the state and the minority language and two minority language, Italian, Hungarian, and also Romani language, and the language of various minority and ethnic communities, as well as the language of immigrants. Um, if I focus just on Rom Roma and Romani language in particular, which are, you know, uh, I was not involved personally in this research, I have to stress, I was in, uh, involved in the research I was speaking before. Uh, I would uh, say that despite a number of measures implemented, based on governmental programs of measures for Roma, the expected improvements, particularly in education, have not been achieved with Roma. And then an analysis of distribution of Roma pupils by grade of primary school generally shows significant decline in enrollment from the first to ninth grade, with an average of only 20% of Roma pupils completing primary school. These are the results of the study that uh, Romana Bisht and Jan Spirits performed. The reasons for the lower academic performance of Roma are multiple and interwinded, but a good command of the first language is necessary basis for successfully upgrading language skills also in the second language, that means in Slovene, which for Roma is also the language of instruction and the key tool for academic success. The sociolinguistic situation of the Romani language in Slovenia is unfavorable. unfavorable. Even the current language policies in education the introduction of Roma assistance in the best case scenario means that Roma pupils manage to complete a certain level of schooling, results in mono, monoliteral bilingualism. In fact, the Romani version, uh, uh, versions that children use at home often exist only in spoken form. Most attempts at standardization of Romani have been made in the case of Prekmuria Romani version, some also in the case of Dolinska version. But here some transcripts already exist namely dictionaries of individual local speeches, and the children are liter uh, literate only in the language of the majority. Thus, the develop, uh, thus develop their reading and writing skills in Slovene, while their communicative competence develop in both languages. In current situation, without an established standard version of Romani, the linguistic goal of full bilingual bilingualism cannot be achieved, as a Romani is not yet fully functional. However, this fact should not hinder the various activi uh, activities and programs aimed at revitalizing, uh, revitalizing minority languages, thereby contributing to the cultural enrichment of society. This is also why, in addition to the new national program of measure for, uh, for Roma and the strategy for Roma education has also been revised and states that if 10, 15 years ago, the fundamental question was how to place Roma on the map of Slovenia, how to provide adequate environmental and housing infrastructure, how to set up multi-purpose spaces in Roma settlements to house, to house activities that would help them raise their social and cultural capital. In the coming years, the fundamental problem will be the acquisition of adequate knowledge and skills in primary, secondary and higher education to enable the deghettoization de 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 and integration of the inhabitants of Roma settlements into the wider social environment. This will enable members 
of the Roma community to move sovereignty outside the Roma settlement and outside the Roma community. Uh, I just uh, want to, to say that um, uh, with Roma uh, in Institute in 21, 22, that means this year, uh, the teaching of Romani is being piloted, a pilot study in two primary schools, Metlik and Beltic classes. Uh, that means that we started with a pilot study to introduce Romani language. Uh, um, uh, for the time, the Institute also are trying to develop uh, an instrument to identify the children's level of linguistic competence in the Romani language. In accordance with the adopted language policy, Slovenia also supports and promotes the teaching of mother tongue and culture to pupils to other, of other nationalities, which has been carried out to varying degrees since 1993. When integrating children, pupils, and students of other nationalities into the Slovene educational system, it is particularly important to promote and maintain language competence in their mother tongue. Each year, the Ministry of Education, Science, and Sport co finances remedial classes of mother tongue and culture for children of other nationalities. The Ministry covers the cost of premises, teaching materials, and material costs, while the cost of the teachers are. Uh, are on the paid by the linguistic community concerned, that means all the state from where the community is coming. The legal basis for the provision of such classes is annual minister decision on financing classes, classes of mother tongue and cultures for children of other nationalities in each school year. So, you know, it was approved from 20, for example, uh, in the year 20. 2021, for example, there were you know uh, 61 uh, children attending uh, uh, attending mother tongue German in uh, elementary school, Macedonian 31 just, uh, pupils or children, Serbian 169, Russian uh, uh, eight, um, um, 81 number, and, Hung uh, and Hungarian 17, Hungarian outside the ethnically mixed area. Finally, although I was talking about bilingualism, about Slovenia and ethnic and language diversity in this ethnically mixed, I would like at the end to stress that today we can speak of mutual influence, interaction of multilingualism on the one hand, and the dynamics of transnationalism, globalism, and Europeanism on the other. An important consequence thereof is a significant major change in the functions and positions of the different languages vis-a-vis -vis each other or between languages in contact, which is reflected at the national, regional and global levels and shapes national languages policies and language practices in multicultural environments. All of the above raises a number of challenges for contemporary societies marked by diversity, calling for institutional responses of the new policies concerning language and multilingualism. A review of literature shows that there are not so many works dealing with multilingualism in contemporary Europe or identifying and integrating the key or and integrating the key social and political dimension and their impact on language policies and practices which have in any way marked a new type of multilingualism and even and the, uh, undermined it, the old traditional link between language and nation state. The question is how to set up an appropriate and equitable linguistic framework for transnational policies. This is a question and it's still open. I think that uh, this uh, open another question of another multilingualism, new multilingualism in Europe. So I think that I hope that you have, um, uh, how can you say it, that I gave the uh, enough uh, clear situation about uh, linguistic diversity in Slovenia. This is a really uh, very huge, huge uh, topic. Uh, so thank you for listening. One hour, it was too much. Uh. Thank you, Professor Nova Kovanovic. Thank you very much for your interesting and inspired presentation and uh, for your very valuable insights into how you, as you said, the language policies and 
relations between communities can support on and, and the one hand and the other hand uh, reject uh, multilingualism or confer a special, special status to either one or several languages. And now um, I will open the floor for questions or for discussions, for the uh, discussion. Oh, Ljubica. Ljubica. Ljubica wants to ask me something. Actually, this was clapping hand, which I first first pressed, but I can also have some questions, so no problem. Yes. The first, yeah. So um, I have several. It was very interesting. Thank you, uh, Sonia. I have several questions. First uh, is, uh, which I also got uh, confused when I was in, in Slovenia. Uh, I know that there are uh, schools in ethnically mixed areas, minority schools or billing, bilingual schools. But I also read that there one of the, the right, minority rights, which is not only territorial based, that minorities could have at least de jure schools with, with beyond or outside the, the ethnically mixed areas. Are there any, there is a right, minority right to education also outside these areas are there any schools uh, italian at least or you mentioned also hungarian with outside maybe in ljubljana yeah. or somewhere else or they are only restricted to ethnically mixed areas so this is my first question the the other question which i found interesting is i had some discussions with serbian minority representatives interestingly minority representative in, in serbia who are totally against bilingual education claiming that bilingual education will lead to assimilation and they see in their monolingual minority education the way to protect their identity what i hear from you i was I, i'm i was somehow surprised because i i as you know in serbia we still we 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 face the problem of parallel societies and strong division lines between majority and minorities and i was surprised that they are not open more for bilingual education and from what i heard from you it, it said uh, is that bilingual education is not jeopardizing uh, minority identity so I would maybe like from you to 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 support or this uh, or to to explain more how is the effect of bilingual education on on preservation of minority in, in uh, it identity on one hand and on the other hand on intercultural communication. And finally, uh, my question uh, uh, goes to this um, uh, using uh, or. Um, so subsidies or stimulus so financial support for uh, for public servants uh, and uh, one of the issues which we have also now in in Schleswig Holstein in Serbia in other countries where it's about official use of languages how you how you actually assess the language knowledge it is not sufficient only to say mm, i am let's say here dane i speak danish or in serbia i'm hungarian ipso facto i, I speak hungarian so what are how in slovenia you you deal with the issue of testing or assessing the proficiency in minority language do they perform some tests or do they have to have some diploma or they just claim i speak let's say italian and that is sufficient uh, thank you very much Thank you very much. You have uh, your your questions are correct. Uh, I agree with all your questions that you asked me, and I think they are very good. Um, uh, at, um, the, this territorial principle educate. No, there are no schools outside ethnically mixed area bilingual schools, but they, in a way, the minority. If they ask, they could have also the uh, uh, the lessons of mother tongue. Uh, they can have lessons, and uh, as I told you, that Hungarian, there are 17, uh, to, to 17 uh, pupils attend the school uh, in uh, a standard school with Hungarian language. Uh, but uh, we don't know in a way uh, in Ljubljana are these chi are these Hung children from minority. This we are going to make in a further research, you know, also. Or they are just, you know, mem um, children of uh, uh, of businessmen, of somebody that wants to attend Hungarian school, Hungarian language. 
they don't ask. That means that this is a, that is the reason that I said that this territorial principle in a way from the linguistic point is not good because at a certain level where the child goes then to the secondary school in Maribor or in Ljubljana or in, for example, Nova Gorica, some way, uh, stop learning Italian or Hungarian. Um, now they are trying in this last year to uh, uh, also to do this in Slovene, in uh, schools in Ljubljana. But for Italian, there was no, still now not, uh, no, uh, nobody, nobody asked, you know, that uh, as far as I know, maybe uh, Lara can, can, uh, can, uh, can cast, uh, correct me, but I don't know, no. Uh, the, ne the next question is, yes, they are- Sorry, sorry, and how many children need to, to request? Is there any threshold? Five oh, children, no, 15 no. or so? No, no, uh -huh. not, not threshold, no. But there is no for Italian, I have somewhere, because I was expecting such question and I was uh, just uh, asked, you know, trying to, just a moment, I was preparing that there was no, uh, oh yeah, uh, uh, and it uh, it was that nobody nobody uh, nobody applied for Italian language outside the outside the ethnically mixed area. So it is correct. Uh, the another question is about uh, bilingual education. You know, as I told you, bilingual education there are several two types. You can have also the school in the mother tongue in Italian and learning the Slovene language. That means that this is also a type of bilingual education, uh, which is completely different than it is in Prekmurje. I don't know what type of bilingual education uh, they want. They think that bilingual education where both children and, and they say concurrent motet and that everything is no, I, I was thinking more about this Prekmurje model because in Serbia there is also the, the in minority schools when the, the teaching is in instruction is minority language, then Serbian language is also obligatory subject. But involving some sub instruction in both Serbian and let's minority language. So Prekmurje style bilingual schools is, is uh, uh, faces some ops also some reservation from from uh, at least bigger minorities. I think, for example, according I, I I can speak about according on the basis of our results research results. Um, the bilingual school in Prekmurje is a very uh, successful and have good results in Slovene language as a state and also in minority language because uh, this model starts uh, the illiteration comes in Slovene and in Hungarian. That means that uh, peop, uh, children are, you know, opisme, uh, opisme, nevane, alliteration, in both languages, which means that also both languages, Slovene and Hungarian are subjects, subjects as a first language. They have the, they they are separate. That means if you applied, if you are a member of Hungarian minority, then you attend Hungarian as a first language, and you attend or as a su subject, and also you attend Slovene as a first language because it's state only bilingual in a way is uh, for uh, mathematics, geography. There are in both languages. But this, of course, is a very difficult from methodological aspect and also how to find a staff, teaching staff that is able to teach in both the two languages. This, this is, I think, very difficult thing. And I think that the successful uh, of bilingual, let us say, to prepare minority and majority to uh, communicate uh, at least at the function at the functional level is because um, the teaching cannot many teach, many lessons are not performed bilingually because you cannot get the stuff mathematics physics geography this is very difficult but the point which we in all our research you know very much uh, support is that when the children are together they uh, they accept the each other 
the difference, the diversity is accepted because the, uh, on the halls, on the, uh, pro, uh, let us say, celebrations of national days, uh, the uh, uh, gymnastic, everything, they are both, and they are aware of bilingualism and biculturalism in the school and in the environment. I think that this contribute to the, very much to the, this intercultural dialogue and to, uh, to the feeling of tolerance. I think it's better because um, maybe Lara can, uh, can give now, I ask her to make a comment because one, uh, as far as I remember that there was, uh, I think in Slovenia or Italian school, uh, they said they don't have contacts with Italian school because if you have school, if you have uh, education just in Italian languages, of course, obvious learning Slovene or Slovene school with Italian, they are not contacts with the schools. And I think it's not, in a way, it's not good this. It's better. That was also the comment of some of uh, our respondents in the research. I'm right, Lara? Yes. What is your suggestion? Not that tell me now you are you're expert on, on on this. I'm not an expert. Yes. Uh, but but yes, uh, the fact uh, if you are talking about uh, Italian schools or Slovenian schools in the coastal region, for example, um, I'm dealing with the um, question of uh, the position and the role of Italian language. And uh, as Professor Lukanovic uh, said in, his, uh, in her speech, um, there is a predominant use of English language and a lot of pupils are interested only in, uh, in English. And uh, this is also the fact that, for example, they say that they have a Slovenian language as a first language or mother language, but uh, some of them, they are also um, telling now that they are uh, native uh, English, which is not, it's, it's not true, it's impossible, <laughs> for example, and um, yeah, there are, uh, there are a lot of issues that are coming out from uh, my researches, and one of these is that there are not communicate, there are no communication, there is um, a, a very, uh, how can I say, it? they are not motivated in learning Italian anymore, because the, the world now it's globalized and they speak English. English, it seems it's a lingua franca for everything. Yes, but uh, on the other side, Prek you know, they are in, they are together, you know, and they accept. Uh, I think at least this this. I think now it's difficult to say. You know, our result, what is good, they don't they don't make big differences. You know, so I think that this is not. Uh, um, I I uh, it depends what goal what goal uh, what the what is the aim of uh, of introducing bilingually what they want, what they want. And I'm afraid if they, the, the, if it's not in the mix, the, then they will go to the separation, ghetto, ghettoization, and this does not bring a, a, a very good results at the end, you know, not in one year, but in many years, they will, uh, the communities will li live not one with other, but one beside other. That's my opinion. Yeah, I agree because unfortunately in Serbia, there are some communities, my youths uh, living in Serbia who communicate to each other in English because they cannot, and uh, they don't understand theirs in their local languages, be it Serbian or minority languages yes. from the area. Yes. Can you is... my multilingualism? I didn't want to start to talk this because I still think that, you know, it's important uh, to rely on language policy, on state languages, but the English is the one that, what I was surprised uh, now, uh, they say English, I was surprised that um, uh, when I was speaking about, uh, about <clears throat> the language, the role of the language and the power of the language with my students, then the uh, students of who are studying this uh, Slovene language, uh, they say that they communicate, communicate with their colleagues English, in English, because on this way, uh, they can uh, express themselves uh, better, which surprised me. How can you express better uh, in English, because you are not living in England, you don't have everyday contacts. I was surprised. That's that's the problem. The English is uh, 
Um, but uh, as some of the scientists said that now English is like uh, like um, being illiterate. Now you have to know English, you have to know computer, and all other languages are the languages that give you added value now. So, but I am I am let us say one of the old generation and support also the language and the culture. Language is a part of the culture and uh, and also the part of identity. Of course, you can have other identities you now, but maybe maybe we can. We'll see what is going on. <laughs> Uh, are you satisfied, Lubica? Yeah, great. Everything. I just also ask about this testing. How do you test uh, public servants whether they are uh -huh. proficient? I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, they uh, they have to. Uh, they uh, we are not making a test. That's the problem. But they just have to show the uh, the uh, how can you say the spirituala uh, the the uh, the documents certificate of certain for example schooling or pra or, or uh, language school that they have for example uh, uh, the knowledge like european framework of languages a or b or c or d of course you know when we were asking about their competence we we want we didn't write what is your uh, uh, let self make a safe evaluation of your language we didn't write a b c uh, 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 but we wrote uh, just all what is it, what is typical for A, for B, for C, but they are very smart. And of course, those who got the, the bilingual bonus, you know, they all make, they were sure that they have to put, you know, that their knowledge is C1, you know, or C2. So I'm um, uh, this result for me, even, you know, I we have that we have asked, we have uh, online, uh, uh, online survey more than 500. Of course, we have to to give to show these results, but uh, sincerely, I am not sure that they are, that they that, that they are you know right. But the problem is, and what we are going to uh, in conclusion to write that it should be made, that uh, it's not enough just to show the um, to show the paper of uh, Dukazila. Uh, Proof, yeah, uh, do Kazila or neke škole or no, no, ne znam šta, uh, but they that they have to go to the exam to the exam uh, exam and they this exam has to be uh, let us say not not uh, just at the beginning but all the time to see whether they you know improve or not improve. For example, one uh, one interesting uh, when I was making a research among ec uh, uh, economy of language, one research that I made with the with the businessmen, with the businessmen, uh, uh, and uh, uh, how they evaluate the knowledge of language, and how uh, if they want, if they, what is the proof? I ask them, for example, the director of Kirka, uh, Kirka Mercator, uh, and these big firms, and they say uh, Revos, and they say no, 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 we don't ask the proofs. The proof you can get. No, no, we okay, they bring the proof, but then when we have an interview, we, uh, we didn't, uh, we didn't um, uh, tell in advance that in the group of the interview is going to be also a native speaker of the language that we want. And then suddenly the discussion come uh, with, with the person. So, so that is in a private, let us say, in business sector, no? not in public sector. And I think that in public sector should also they had they should change the the proofs for their knowledge of language. Agree, Lara? Yes, if I may add some considerations. For example, the data from uh, Professor Lukanovic research. Uh, uh, shows that um, show that, for example, they are all expert in Slovenian in Slovenian Istria on the coast um, about uh, Italian language that they master the language at a somehow high level. But uh, for example, um, I know from um, uh, interviews and also from just from from talking with uh, people from Italian minority that, for example, this is not the case because uh, there are still a lot of in, uh, in, uh, there are still a lot of um, 
discrepancies between the reality and the fact that, for example, the, the, the people there um, at the offices, um, public offices, they don't speak Italian. And a lot of time, the, the, um, the members of uh, Italian uh, national community have to adapt, so to use the Slovenian language, if they want to be fast and to make a practice <laughs> in, a, in a few minutes and not been there, for example, an hour or more. So this is something that we know, for example. There, there, are, a lot of, um, there are a lot of documents uh, that are bilingual, but uh, the other fact is the, the person there. That means it's a big difference between oral and written communication. Written communication is performed, you know, in Italian language. You can get uh, all documents, all legislation, everything is bilingual. But the problem is with oral. Uh, oral, oral, uh, <coughs> oral communication. Uh, that's uh, that would be you know we are now concluding this. Uh, we are in the final phase of this uh, research, and we are going to of course to suggest because we hope that uh, that policy is going to eat also our results, and maybe you know they will implement and they will make some changes. But I think it's going to be a big uh, uh, how can you say fight because everybody will say, yes, I speak it and I want to have a bilingual bonus. So it's a, it's a very, uh, let us say, a topic which is, not, uh, <laughs> which is not very good, you know, but it is spent a lot, a lot of money for this, uh, for this bilingual bonus from the budget of Slovenia. And of course, you know, nobody can touch this because if you touch, then you can have a, a war. So, does anyone else have a question? We have about five more minutes. A lot of work still. <sighs> okay. Okay, then uh, let me conclude then by Take, uh, thanking all of you for your time, especially Professor Nova Kukanovic for uh, her inspired presentation. And I hope that we will see soon in some maybe team building or some summer school as we spoke last time. Last time. I think that we have to find something, yes, or, uh, or some, reason, yeah. some reason to meet again, you know. Sorry that Ljubica, you, žao me da niste bila sa nama. Ne i meni, ali bit će prilike. U programu sam za Brijune u septembru, tako najkasnije, najkasnije se vidimo na Brijunima, a nadam se i pre toga. Ja, ja, znate da u Brijunima idu nas i ne puno. E, super. <laughs> ja sam metnula na našem referatu Laro, Atila, uh, onda Romana, Janes, Sabina. Uh, ja. Ide, da, sjajno. I Marko i ja, evo, Marko Jovanović i ja idemo. I sa institutom Šanku, tako da ćemo sam da svi družiti. Super. Tako, tako, da, I da nešto da, da, da nađemo neku, neku, kako se kaže, kako, kako napred. Vera, ti možete ja. pri onih? To pa še ne, uh, to pa še ne vem. Evo, ja vas sve pozdravljam, ali sa Sonjom ne mogu govoriti, mislim, tako sam navikla slovenarski da govorim. Drago mi je da smo se videli jako i bilo je i interesantno predavanje. Sigurno bi se o svakoj od tih tema moglo još pričati, zato što u stvari ono što je najvažnije na tom području je fleksibilnost. I nekako se i to moglo razabrati iz toga što je Sonja rekla, dobro, taj pravni okvir je postavljen, ali naravno ova, kako se je to implementacija u praksi, to zavisi i od okruženja, zavisi od toga kakva je atmosfera, jel da? Zato što namera je u stvari da bi se ljudi međusobno razumeli, ne? I evo tako da, evo i mi smo se sad razumeli, jel? Odlično. Dobar je Sonja, ti čestitam. Ja učim sad, uvek moram da govorim srpski. 
Ne, ne, nego treba da imamo onaj paralel bilingualizam, svako priča svoj jezik. Tako je, tako je. Tako da pričajte slovenački, molim vas da i malo i mi naučimo slovenački, a ne da se ja stalo... Ja bi želio da malo, zna, ja idem o koncepta prilagajanja. Tako je. Ja govorim srpski ne zato što da me vi razumete, ali zato da vam kažem neko spoštovanje i da vas volim. Evo, sjajno. Sjajno. Dobro, hvala vam puno, pozdrava Beograd. Hvala puno. Hvala i vama, super. Pa vidimo se uskoro, nadam se. Vidimo se. Pozdrav. Ćao. Hvala vam puno, vidimo se onda uskoro. Prijatno. Hvala svima. Ćao.